we come to the door and there's two highway patrol officers with the two purses and two IDs and are these your children? He said there's been an accident and Alicia crossed over the median on I-35 and then she hit a van, a full-size van head on and when she did she instantly died. I stood there for a moment trying to grasp in that he had just told me that my firstborn child was gone and it seemed like eternity. And then I said, what about Boo? And he said, well, they've air flown her to the trauma center. She's critical and she's not gonna make it. Roger and Dawn Lane prayed that God would spare their daughter, Laura, affectionately called Boo. I felt the spirit of God rise up within me. I heard the Lord begin to speak to my heart in that moment and he said, I told you not to worry about Boo because she's in the palm of my hand. And it was at that very moment that I settled it and I just put my hand on Roger's shoulder and I said, she will live and she won't die. Earlier that day, the Lane's two oldest children, 19-year-old Alicia and 15-year-old Boo, were driving home from a Christian youth rally in Oklahoma City. Suddenly, an 18-wheeler passed Alicia and clipped her car. She lost control and went across the median into oncoming traffic. Alicia was killed instantly. Med Flight RN Nathan Dilley was working that afternoon and among the first on the scene. He knew it was a life-or-death situation for Boo. I could tell uh, by the condition of the car that it was pretty well smashed up and that she'd been thrown out. We could see someone doing resuscitation on her. So I knew that that was a serious situation. Uh, it doesn't get any worse than that. The chances of her living uh, through that would be about 1% or less than 1% actually. In addition to providing medical care on the 15 minute flight to the hospital, Nathan and his partner took another step. They prayed for their dying patient. When we see someone that's this gravely injured that may not survive, we always make the decision to pray for them and uh, just to continue to pray. And, and we realized ourselves that this was not going to be our care that brought this person through that, but God's hand. Who made it to the hospital? Dr. Roxy Albrecht led the trauma team who received her. Boo came in as a priority one trauma or a level one trauma, and that's our highest level of activation. And her injury severity score was 41, which is very, very high. Um, you know, over 25 is critical. When the Lanes arrived at the hospital, they rushed in to see their daughter. I knew that when they took me in to see Boo, that she wasn't going to look like my boo. I already knew that. But you're never prepared for the moment that you're gonna see your child look that bad. It was scary, seeing her through all the hoses and the tubes and uh, there's nothing that she could do for herself. Laying there and uh, all you could do is just hope and pray and believe. We were told that she had a traumatic brain injury her lungs had collapsed, her, she had broken scapulas, bi bilateral ones. Uh, the face bones were all fractured on the side of her face. It was all crushed and broke, and they had already told us she was gonna need surgery on her leg. As doctors worked to save Boo's life, her parents clung to their faith in God. I knew that I had the promise of God to stand on, that no matter what she looked like, no matter what they said, I knew that I could still believe God for his word and that she was going to pull through this. Dawn's boss at the time, a physician's assistant, came to the hospital to comfort the family and help them understand Boo's condition. When they told us what all had happened, I really didn't feel like that she would make it. I thought she was going to lose two daughters that day. Doctors did all they could to save Boo's life. She survived the first critical hours but there were no guarantees for long-term survival. You know, the brain injuries are a black box. Uh, it, it all depends on where the injury is, what deficits you're gonna have. It, it's hard to quantify what patients' um, outcomes are gonna be uh, until you just give them time. The doctors and Boo's family were ready for the long and uncertain road ahead. But on the day of her sister's funeral, Boo woke up. And it was right before we got there. It was right after the funeral. And when we walked in, she was awake. Doctors expected Boo to spend 30 days in ICU and then several months in hospital rehab. But that wasn't necessary. 
Boo was formally discharged from the hospital in 27 days. 27 days. She came home with leg cast on. You know, she wasn't there, you know, uh, mentally. You could see in her eyes that there were still pieces missing. But she was home. And uh, that just goes to show you that God answers prayer. That God, when God gives you a specific word, that he has her in the palm of his hands. Nobody, nothing, no principality, no power, no human can take her out of his hands. With every passing day, Boo continued to improve. She started making progress in physical therapy. She still went through the things that you would have to go through. She just progr progressed a lot quicker than most people get to. By the end of summer, she made a full recovery. She had a lot of good care, and I would agree with that, but I think she had God's healing too. It was nothing short of a miracle, a miraculous recovery that I've only seen a handful of times in the 20 plus years of doing this. Boo returned to school in the fall and graduated as valedictorian of her class. It's remarkable to come in uh, unstable and to get resuscitated and go through the hospital that many days and get out and be a valedictorian, you know, not miss a beat. That, that doesn't happen. Boo has gone on to complete college with a degree in nursing. She's also married now to a guy her sister knew and wanted her to meet. It was just really neat to find out that my sister was just, she was such a big part of his life too. God is always faithful. Just stick with him and he'll see you through anything that you, that comes your way.